In this video, we'll take a look at section 6.8, which is complex numbers. Now, our first objective is the complex number i. Now, before in previous sections, we saw if we had the square root of a negative number, this was not a real number. Okay. Now we're actually going to be able to simplify these types of problems using a complex number system. So the complex number i, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, which means that i squared is equal to negative 1. So if we have i is equal to the square root of negative 1, I'm just going to show you how we get this property. If I raise both sides to the second power, essentially what happens here is square root and second power cancel out. I'm left with i squared is equal to negative 1. Let's take a look at some examples. So express in terms of i. We have the square root of negative 5. So now square root of negative 5 I could break this apart as square root of, let's say, negative 1 times 5, which in turn I could break up into negative, sorry, square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. But now square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So I have i times the square root of 5. Or, depending on which textbook you use, you might also see it as square root of 5 and then times i. So when you have a negative inside the square root, square root, you can pull it out and just put an i in the front of that square root, and then it changes it to positive. Let's take a look at another example. So square root of negative 25. So first, I could get rid of that minus sign inside the square root by taking out an i. So this would be i times the square root of 25. But now, square root of 25, I could simplify that. Square root of 25 is equal to 5. So I have i times 5, which is equal to 5i. Okay. So now remember, when we were dealing with square roots, we're trying to look for a number where if we raise it to the second power, will give us negative 25. Well, if I have 5i, if I raise it to the second power, this gives me 5 raised to the second power times i raised to the second power which gives me 25 times, and now remember, i squared is equal to negative 1. So that gives us that negative 25 that's inside the square root. So 5i works in this case. <clears throat> okay. Next problem, expressed in terms of i. Now we have negative and then square root of negative 11. Now be careful with these types of problems because that minus minus, I don't change that into plus. So I have to actually perform the square root part first. And then negative stays on the outside. So this becomes negative. And now the negative inside the square root, I could fix that by putting an i on the outside. I have times square root of 11. So I have negative i times the square root of 11. And now square root of 11, I can't simplify it because there isn't a whole number where if I raise it to the second power, it gives me 11. So I just leave my answer in this form. Next problem I have expressed in terms of i, so I have negative and then the square root of negative 36. Okay, so first I have to fix that negative inside the square root, so I have to pull out an i, and now I'm left with just the square root of positive 36. Well, positive square root of 36, that gives me 6. So I have negative i times 6, this gives me negative 6i. Next problem, I have square root of negative 54. Okay, let's fix the negative inside the square root first. So I have i times the square root of 54. And now let's see if we can simplify the square root of 54. So let's break down 54 using a factor tree. So I could break it down with 2 and 27. 27 I could break down with 3 and 9. And then 9 I could break down with 3 and 3. So when we're dealing with square roots, remember we need two of the same number in order to take it out of the radical. So since I have two threes, I could take that three and put it on the outside. So this would give me now 3i times the square root of 
Now what's left over is this 2 and 3. Multiply it back together and put it back inside that square root. So we have 3i times the square root of 6. Next problem, express in terms of i. So we have square root of negative 4 plus the square root of 12. So essentially what we want to do here is just simplify both these radicals. Well, square root of negative 4, we could take out an i first, and this becomes positive square root of 4, we have plus square root of 12. Square root of 4 gives me 2, so I'm left with 2i plus, now square root of 12, let's simplify that. I could break down 12 into 2 and 6, and then each one, and then the 6 I could break down to 2 and 3. So I have 2 of the same number here, so I could take that 2 out, put it on the outside, and the 3 goes back inside that square root. Now one other thing when we're dealing with uh, complex numbers, you want to write the complex part at the end. So I'm just going to rearrange these terms. This would be 2 times the square root of 3 plus 2i. So the complex number part goes out the end of the, the end of your solution. This is called standard form. One last problem. <clears throat> Express in terms of i. So I have 6 minus square root of negative 84. So remember, first I have to take out the negative from the square root. So I have 6 minus. So in order to fix the negative inside the square root, I take an i out and put it on the outside. I have i times the square root of 84. Okay, well now let's see if we can simplify square root of 84. Okay, let's break it down. I could use 2 and 42. 42, I could break it down with 2 and 21. And then the 21, I could break down with 3 and 7. Now remember, I need 2 of the same number to take it out of the square root. We'll have two twos. So I could take one of the twos out, put it on the outside. So I have 6 minus 2i times the square root of, now what's left over is the 3 and the 7. Multiply them together, you get 21. And now you have your final answer. Another way that you can write this out, or you write this out as 6 minus 2 times the square root of 21, and then i on the outside. So that was it for section 6.8. If you have any questions, email me and I'll help you out.